undefeated four-time world champion, two-time chop winner, world-class athlete, fitness and wellness expert, TV host, cooking enthusiast, founder of the Layla Alley lifestyle brand, mother of two, daughter of three-time boxing champion, and one of the most celebrated athletes of our time, boxing icon Muhammad Ali. She's keeping busy this day. She just released her cookbook, Food for Life, and there's so much more to talk about. I am thrilled to welcome to my show, Layla Ali. Hi. I'm so excited to have you, and I have to tell you the cutest story first. So I was just in Florida visiting my father, who's going to be 89, God bless him. And he said, you know, and I was telling him that I had you on, and he's the biggest boxing fan in the world he'll like box in his chair like with his shoulders and he goes you tell her that her dad was a gentleman he goes i used to watch him box in the bronx and he was always polite and always a gentleman Oh, that's so sweet, and and he's telling the truth, because my dad really loves people, you know, and always took the time for everyone, so I'm glad he had the opportunity to to be around him or to meet him. That's pretty cool. I know, right? That that was so cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyways, I had to share that with you. So you're busy. Your new cookbook... Um, Your first ever cookbook, which I I love so much, um, Food for Life, and I know it was very important for you to make it very healthy. You have your own kids, too, and um, what we put in our body is is basically who we are. So we're going to talk about that, too, and your beauty products, your philanthropy work, and now you launched Layla Alley Lifestyle. That's so cool. And you're partnering with TIAA Oath and Oath to serve as ambassador for TIAA Difference Maker 100 Initiative. Tell us about that. Yes, I'm super excited to be the ambassador for TIAA. So they partner with Oath and are recognizing 100 individuals who are doing great work through their their nonprofits and trying to make a difference in the world. And all these individuals that that win will receive $10,000 for their nonprofit where they work. Um, So they're going to be giving away a total of $1 million, which I think is absolutely amazing. And what's great is anyone can actually submit themselves or someone else um, to be considered if they go to TIAA Difference Maker 100.org. So I'm just trying to bring awareness to it because I think it's just so great. It's so great, and I didn't even know about it until I started reading about it through you. Right. Well, that's see, see. So spread, spread the news, girls. Like we, there's some money out here to get for your good. So I, I let's know, get it. right? <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about it, though. So basically, you know, a lot of people that are working, so TIAA is an organization um, and a company that's been around for many years, right? And they're, they're always trying to encourage people about financial literacy, to invest their money, things like that. And mm-hmm. right now, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to shine a light on people who are doing positive things to encourage others to do positive um, things as well. So on the website, that's where all the information is. Like I said, TIAAdifferencemakers.100.org, and you can see the submissions and articles and videos and just inspiring stories of the difference makers across the nation. And again, like I said, submit um, your own person that you want to recommend or yourself. So, yeah. Isn't that so nice? They reached out to me um, to be the ambassador because, you know, philanthropy is at the core of of my life. I mean, just watching my dad growing up and seeing all that he did to give back was amazing. So I've partnered with organizations like Feeding America and the Women's Sports Foundation and the American Heart Association um, and and more. So I think that's why they chose me to be an ambassador for the program. Well, plus you you know you stand for all of that, and so did your father. So it's a perfect it's a perfect fit. And you know what? If everyone was kind and everyone did you know made a positive impact in this world, this world would be a better place too. So we need yeah. to. Well, we can all do our part, and that's why I try to remind people because trust me, if I always you know thought of just my dad and the level of, you know, goodness that he did, then I would, if I compared myself to him, I'd feel like I wasn't doing anything. You know? <laughs> That's but, right. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, we can all do it in our own way, whether it's in the community, you know, um, and sometimes people give back with their time. Some people give with their money. You just want to make a conscious effort to do something. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do, do something. And you're teaching, I'm sure you're teaching your two kids the same. Oh, of course. 
you know, when we definitely, for all the obvious things like during the holidays and things like that, we make sure that we do the toy drives or, you know, help with with cooking and some or giving food to the pantries in the yeah. area. And then just anytime I see people who aren't doing so well or that are homeless, I explain to my kids. I talk about it. I talk about it. I talk about life choices and things like that and how we can help others because I want them to be aware that not everybody can just wake up in a warm house and take a bath and eat when they want to and drink water when they want to. They, it, it astonishes them that still in other countries that some of these kids don't even have running water. They've got to walk miles to get a, a dirty pail of water. Isn't so, it amazing? Yep. And it's so important to open our kids' eyes to to the to the, all of the world. Exactly. When the time is right because at the same time I don't want to overwhelm my children too, too young. Yes, so. that's mm-hmm. true. So tell me, your cookbook, Food for Life. What a great cookbook. And I know that you've been cooking since you were nine years old. Was it cooking or boxing first? Yeah, definitely <laughs> cooking. Cooking. Um, you know, it's funny because I grew up um, in a household when my parents were married. We had a, a cook, and her name was Edith, and she made amazing food. And then when my parents divorced, I had to divorce the cook. Oh, so she, <laughs> that was tough, right? My mom, yeah, my mom, you know, she wasn't really, she didn't really cook. So I got in the kitchen myself and started teaching myself how to cook, and I used to call my grandma on the phone and Hey, Grandma, how do you make this? How do you make that? And then from there, I kind of just self-taught. You know, I'm I'm not a chef by any means, and I always correct people when they say that because, you know, I have too much respect for the culinary world. But I can throw down in the kitchen, and I can make just about anything taste good. And I love soul food. I love to eat. Um, I love comfort food. But being that I was an athlete for so many years and nutrition, eating was always looked at as nutrition, like how is this going to affect my body? I've been able to take recipes that I love and say, hmm, how can I make this better for me so that I can eat it on a more regular basis? And, you know, that's how I came up with a lot of uh, the recipes in the book and some of them, many of them I've been making for many years and there's also new ones in there that I created especially for the book with with a writer, um, Lita Shintab, who is absolutely amazing. Um, And that's how Food for Life came to be. So it's my first cookbook. I'm sure I'm going to be doing more Oh, I and, think you should. I'm following your yeah. cookbook. What's a, you. a daily schedule? I'm, I'm, I know you said this before too. You're not a breakfast person. I'm not a real breakfast person either, and it's hard when you have kids. Yeah, a lot of people aren't. Um, you know, that's that's why for so many years we've heard, oh, breakfast is the most important meal. You're supposed to eat it. You know, and there's you know different theories on that. But I think that the main thing I try to do is I try to get nutrition in throughout the day and feed my body when I'm hungry. You know, you definitely. I'm don't want to be starving yourself and when you do eat you want to make sure you're eating the most nutritious food possible because our food becomes our organs That's and our right. skin and our hair and people don't think of it that way you know if you're putting a bunch of processed stuff in your body that has no nutrients then you could be walking around some people are overweight obese and still yeah. malnourished because they're not eating anything that's good for them so I just try to instead of thinking about the things that I shouldn't be eating or the things that I need to remove from my diet or you know or this is what I encourage other people to do think about what you can add you know to make you feel better whether it's some bone broth you know if you don't like eating you know in the morning do a little research on how good bone broth is for you and how healing it is maybe you can sip on that you know maybe you can do a shake I like to do shakes because I don't have a lot of time and I don't want to be weighed down I want to be energized so I have my ingredients that I put in my shake those change from time to time depending on what my needs are and it's exciting because you get you you try new flavors you try new things I find I put my the most greens I ever eat in my shake. Exactly, because you can't eat enough right. of them. You know, you can't eat enough of them, so you definitely want a supplement. But yeah, I did a little, little key lime coconut shake the other day. Oh, yum. Um, and it was really good, and I put a lot of spinach in there. You don't even taste it. So, oh, yeah. That sounds so good. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to Layla Alley. She partnered with TIAA Difference Maker 100, a program that honors nonprofit workers who are making a positive impact on the world. Um, and we're recogni- they're recognizing individuals, notable individuals, and reflecting on those different maker, different different makers in her in her life and in their lives and I'm going to put that all up on the website too and she has a cookbook out um, food for life which is also awesome so your favorite thing to cook what is it 
people ask me that, and it's so hard to choose just one. So I kind of just okay. How about your of, kids' favorite thing? You know, well, we we love Taco Tuesday over here. So, <laughs> um, we love Taco Tuesday, and you know, I put hidden vegetables in their tacos. They don't even know it. So I take zucchini and peel the green skins off, and then food process the zucchini. So it's kind of riced, right? And then oh, yeah. you put it into the ground turkey meat, and it's just you know it's flavored flavored up with all the spices. So they're getting like four zucchini in there with the with the uh, pound of, of meat. So it's just like they don't even realize it. So I can feel good as a mom, you know, giving them a healthy meal, and they love it. So yep, I would say definitely Taco Tuesday is something we all look forward to. Oh, I have a taco night too. I sometimes I switch them up. I like to switch because it's a good idea to do to do that. One night you have this, one night you have that, and between sports, you know, it gets busy. Okay, so what was it like growing up Muhammad Ali's daughter? You know, I don't know any other life, um, but I would say that it's amazing. It was amazing um, to have someone like himself right in your house as your role model. Um, you know, I didn't know at a young age how famous my dad was or why he was so famous, but I have a lot of pride now, obviously, knowing everything that he went through um, on his way to becoming a beloved global yeah. icon. And I have the utmost respect for him and put him on the highest pedestal. But my dad um, was just not a big disciplinarian, loved to just say yes, loved for us to have fun, you know, taking us places. And But he, he definitely would spoil you to death. That's what my, my dad sounds like the same person. <laughs> yeah, he would spoil you to death. And and he, um, you know, but he de- he would sit us down and have serious conversations about the world and people and being being good good children and everything. So he did do that. But for the most part, it was all fun, fun, fun with my dad. He loved having guests around, always entertaining. I mean, our house was like a public place, mm-hmm. and you'd see people like Michael Jackson and Prince and <laughs> Stevie Wonder and you know John Travolta and just every big star of the time coming to see Muhammad being a fan. It was just a regular day at our house. Isn't that amazing? He would have been, mm-hmm. would he have been 76 this year? I think so, yes, yeah, 76 or 77. Isn't I'm so that bad with amazing? Yeah, no, I'm bad with that too. All right, so when you first, when you decided you wanted to be a boxer, what was, what did you like train privately? Did you come out and tell him, like, I think I'm going to do this? I did train privately um, because I saw women's boxing on television for the first time when I was about 18 and, um, you know, I, I had contemplated doing it for a year. Um, the seed had been planted, but I was kind of, you know, wasn't sure that's the route I wanted to go with my life. And then once I decided I, I wanted to give it a stab, I, I got to the boxing gym, started training in the evenings, and I was going to school and had my own business at the time. And, you know, my dad got, got wind of it and uh, tried to talk me out of it indirectly, and that didn't work. So he decided to just go ahead and support me, and he did. So. Oh my, but I, cause I would imagine, because back then, there wasn't really really girl boxers, right? Yeah, there were, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a promoted or televised. Right. So nobody really knew about it, just like I didn't. I didn't know until I was 18, and I couldn't believe that I didn't know, and I'm sure my father didn't either. So Christy Martin um, was the biggest name back then, and I think in 1996 she was on a major undercard, a Mike Tyson undercard, and that's when women's boxing got exposure on that level for the first time. That's when I saw it, and I'm sure a lot of people did. Um, and, you know, I ended up fighting Christy, which is crazy. Um, you know, I think they're about to do a movie about her life, which would be great. Oh, I'm sure they're going to do one about your life one day, too. Eventually, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I'm, if you were here, by the way, in my town, I would be your friend. Like, I think we could hang, we would hang, because you sound like the same, reading all about you and knowing about you, I was like, you sound like we would be like, we're the same kind of person with our kids and our family and everything right. else. So I'm sure it was a lot of pressure, though, because I, everyone was like, oh, Muhammad Ali's daughter is going to box. And that had to be a lot on your shoulders, too, though. Yeah, it was, but I mean, I can handle a lot. Um, Nobody had higher expectations than me that I had on myself, so that was just not even an issue. Um, I have really, um, luckily, naturally, since I was young, been able to take energy and transfer it into something positive, so for me, the more... um, 
you know, naysayers there were, the more people said I couldn't do it, the harder I worked to prove them wrong. So I just fe- let it fuel my fire, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I was on a mission, you know, so it wasn't really, I wasn't really waking up thinking about anybody else but myself and, and what I wanted for myself. So, um, and I'm just glad, like I said, that both of my parents, my mom and my dad, gave me the space to be confident and ha- feel like I could do anything that I wanted to do and nothing was going to stop me, not even my dad. So. I love- I, I love that. I, you could feel it in your voice when you're talking about it, Thank too. You. So the, the first time you got in that ring, what was that like? That you're, like what, were, what was it like? Were you just like zoned in to do mm-hmm. what you had to do? Well, you know, it's hard to explain, but, you know, your, your adrenaline is going. You're on. It's like every hard mile that you ran, every piece of bread that you didn't eat, every body blow you took mm. in the gym training, you know, to get this is the moment, you know, and it's going to. It, 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 you know, your first, my first fight was a four-round fight, two-minute round. So I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be oh, this is going to be over really quickly. So I got to give it my all, you know, for this for this amount of time. But I've been training for months and months and months for it. So um, you know, I just went. 